Right, so you guys having a good camp so far? You know, so just remember that, you know, if we're going to try and be different, we, you know, we're changing a behavior. And that stuff, is, it's just going to take time. You, you have to direct your energy towards something. Why not move in a more inspired direction, even if it's, you know, a little uncomfortable? You know, uncomfortable just means different. You know, so if we can start changing how we're viewing, you know, growth, you know, in life, especially through sport, you know, then we're able to you know, do that in a much more in, in inspired way. You know, the main difference between, you know, happy golfers and unhappy golfers is not where their golf ball goes, right? It's how they're interpreting the world that they're living in, in an inspired way or an uninspired way. You know, so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to talk about how to use our mindset to our advantage only in ways that serve our ability to be awesome relative to a pre-shot and a post-shot routine, right? So everything that we're going to talk about is direct related to golf, but there's a lot of lessons inherent within the game that we can use to help, you know, have our lives be the way we want them to be. So if we're looking at a pre-shot routine, the first thing that we have to do in step number one is what we call decide, right? Decide just means like, let's get behind our ball and let's decide like how we want this whole thing to go. Right? Now, most golfers are way too vague with their decision making. They're on the first tee and they go, oh, somewhere out there between the trees, that'd be good, right? Or anywhere near the green. But the more specific we are with our intention, the more our bodies can comply with what we're looking to achieve, right? So uh, you guys familiar with a golfer named Jason Day? Jason Day is a PGA Tour player. Um, he hasn't been on TV a whole lot lately. He's had some back problems the last couple of years, but you know, he was a top player in the world not too long ago. And a few years ago, uh, he got a lot of attention for this decide element of his pre-shot routine. Does anybody recall what he does that's kind of a little bit different from some of the other players? Well, he would stand behind his ball, he would take his grip, he would look towards the flag, take a deep breath, and close his eyes. He'd open his eyes, and he'd walk in, and execute the shot. What is he doing? What do you think? Well, I think he's just trying to like trying to really like know any type of where he wants to go. Yeah. Where he wants to go so that when he when he lines up to it, he's completely sure where he wants to go. Yeah, exactly. So he's just having a little daydream. He's having a daydream of how he wants things to be between his club, his golf ball, and, and the outcome. And the more specific he is with that picture, right, the more he feels supercharged to actually hit that shot. And when he closes his eyes, he's just blocking out any kind of distractions, and he's really having a moment with himself where he can kind of create a little movie or a preview of coming attractions. You know, you can do that without closing your eyes. But he was doing that, and the commentators on TV were like, oh, look at Jason Day. Look at what he's doing, right? So we all know how to daydream. I know you know how to daydream because, you know, I've been in school like you, and sometimes you're just like, I'd rather be somewhere else, and you're... You know, looking out the window, you want to be playing with your friends or be out at the golf course, right? So let's have a little daydream. Let's create a picture of exactly what we want. The start line, the height, the curve, even what happens to the ball when it lands. If you're hitting a chip shot, you know, picture it going in the hole. You know, why just try and get it close when the whole point of golf is to get it, get it in the hole, right? So the more we can be specific with what we want, the better chance we can create a, a system of movement, right, that helps us get what we want. So step number two is what we call communicate. You know this as a practice swing, right? We're going to communicate to our muscles the movement that we think is going to take this daydream and bring it, and bring it to life, right? So if you're imagining a, a right to left curving shot, well, that requires a certain swing shape and club face position. You know, what kind of swing shape? would be perfect for producing that little curve. If you're trying to hit the ball low, like underneath some tree branches or beneath the breeze, well, I can't set up like this because that posture is going to hit the ball high. Right? I'm going to move my shoulders and my weight in a position to take loft off the face and strike the ball lower. Right? If we you know, have the ball sitting in some deep rough around the green, we can't swing the club back low to the ground. It's going to get caught in all that grass. So we have to make a rehearsal swing that makes the club move more up and down so we can avoid some grass and use the loft to pop the ball up and out. 
So basically, a lot of players are out there not being clear with what they want. They're just swinging the club back and forth, right? So they're getting a, a high level of variability out of their experience, right? So we're just trying to tighten things up here. So decide, communicate. Step number three, this one is so, so important. It's what we call elevate, right? What we're talking about is elevating our mood, right, through our thinking. So would you agree that people tend to do well when they feel awesome? Yes. Yeah, so like the better you feel, you know, the more you enjoy life and the better you perform. Well, the thing is, is how you feel is a product of how you, how you think. So we've all played golf for a certain period of time. And can you think of a time where you were over a golf shot and you just knew you were going to hit a good one and you did? Like, hey, this feels awesome. Like, you know, I'm sitting here, I got a little five foot putt. Like that hole looks massive. And you walk up and you go, oh, golf is easy. Let's, let's go, right? Or you've been on like a, a tee box and you're like, man, you know, this hole looks really nice and you know, I'm really enjoying the people that I'm hanging out with and I just made a nice par on the last hole and like, oh, you know, this feels good. And you hit a nice one. Has everyone at least had that experience once where you felt like, hey, this feels like it's going to go all right. Now, if you've had that experience, because golf is challenging, I would bet you've had the opposite experience where you're like, this ain't going to go good. <laughs> right? And you hit a shot and you top it or it goes in the trees and you're like, I knew I was going to do that. Right? Well, the knowing is really in the, in the feeling. And the feeling is coming from how you're thinking in that moment. Now, if we haven't had any mental toughness training up to this point, you know, we sort of have this idea that our emotional state is always fluctuating based on, based on the environment. So when we were feeling like high grade vibes, well, things were going well, so let's just keep them going well, right? We like the people that we're with, we like the course that we're on, we're having a good day, and let's just keep having a good day. Conversely, when things aren't going well, oh, I just triple bogeyed, I just topped my shot, you know, I don't feel well today, you know, we didn't get any food, you know, I don't enjoy the people we got paired up with, the group in front of us is slow. You know, there's an organic environment taking shape that is creating a non-helpful way of thinking that is lowering your mood and giving you less access to your gift of being able to hit good shots. So we're going to have a little exercise right here, and we're going to start off um, just uh, closing our eyes, and for a moment, I want you to think of something that has happened in your life um, that has been sad or unpleasant, you know, something that you probably don't want to think about all the time, um, but we've all had at least one thing, so just close your eyes and just allow yourself to settle into that moment. Okay, now let's leave that place. And let's think of the exact opposite experience. Something that has happened in your life that has been awesome, joyful. When you think about it, you want to smile, you want to laugh. We've got a bunch of those too. Okay, you can open your eyes. Now, when you thought about the sad, unpleasant thing, did you notice any difference in like the energy in your body? Did it sort of get heavy and sort of drop you know, into the pit of your stomach just a little bit? And then when you thought of that opposite experience, did you notice a lightness occur, right? Maybe the corners of your mouth started to lift up a little bit. So that's an example of how just through your thinking, you created a pretty wide spectrum in human emotion from sadness to happiness, right? So basically, emotional states, they come from thinking. Happiness, sadness, anger, frustration, confidence. They're all emotional states. And all emotional states come only from how we're thinking in that moment. So one of the things that we're taught in golf, we're conditioned uh, to believe in golf, is that confidence comes from success. Like, oh, you watch golf on TV and they're talking about a certain player. He or she, they've been working with their coach, right? They've been putting in the work. They had a great round, you know, last week at the Rocket Mortgage. You know, she just made four birdies on the front nine. She's got her confidence back. They're telling you that confidence comes from an external outcome. But confidence is an emotional state. And emotional states can only come from thinking. 
So one of our mental toughness mantras is create the state, don't wait. Don't wait for something good to happen before you permit yourself to feel good about yourself. Because if you're waiting, it might never happen. Right? So if we learn how to create this emotional state that we know to be confidence now, then we have more access to our gift of being able to hit good golf shots. And then we dramatically accelerate or increase the likelihood of getting that successful outcome to begin with. Right? So how we think determines how we feel. How we feel determines how we perform. Right? So uh, everyone here know who Michael Jordan is? If you don't know Michael Jordan, maybe you know like Steph Curry or somebody that's like a totally awesome basketball player. So Michael Jordan um, had an experience in his career where he went out and he was on fire during one of his games, right? First 10 shots, you know, boom, swish, 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 right? In the arena, you know, the people in the, the crowd, they're going nuts. Like, hey, we bought tickets to a good game tonight, right? And his teammates are like, you know, high energy and they're running down the court, you know, give him the ball, give him the ball. He's like, give me the ball, right? So when you're on fire, you think you want the ball? Yeah, right? If you keep on making it, do you want the ball? Yeah, absolutely. So it's easy, right, when things are going well, to operate from a high grade mood. Well, the very next game, the very next night, he's playing the same team in the same arena, and he has the exact opposite experience. He actually missed his first 10, right? So the crowd's like, ugh. What's going on here? We were here last night, season ticket holders. His teammates might be like a little bit you know, lower with their mood or attitude. And what's, what's Michael Jordan thinking right now? Now remember, there's a reason we know his name is Michael Jordan. He's thinking, this is perfect. This couldn't be better. I missed 10 in a row. There's no way I can miss 11. Give me the ball. Right? His emotional state never changes based on the outcome. Because right? he understands that access to his gift comes from his emotional state. So misses or makes, no different. You know, this is amazing, this is amazing. Give me the ball, 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 give me the ball. We call that the shooter's mentality, right? Basketball is the ultimate game of opportunity. Lots of shots, lots of chances. If the ball doesn't go in, he goes, oh, the ball's not gone. What's going to happen? Lowers his mood, no access to his gift, sabotages his performance. Right? So when we operate from a low-grade mood through low-grade thinking, we're actually ruining our ability to be awesome. Right? And top-level athletes understand the connection between thinking and success, and that's why they train themselves to only see possibility to elevate, 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 elevate. Right? Now in life, we've also been conditioned to see outcomes as good or bad. Oh, the ball went towards a target. Good. Oh, the ball rolled on the ground, right? right? That's highly problematic because if you're seeing outcomes as being problematic, right, then guess what? Your life is filled with problems. If you see outcomes as either neutral, right, or positions of opportunity, or just opportunities to shift the lens and maybe learn something from them, well, then your life is filled with, you know, opportunity and possibility and, and, and growth, right? So there's a lot of people that live in a world where all they see is, you know, lack and disappointment and frustration. There's other people who live in a world where all they see is love and opportunity and possibility. Same world, right? Just a different viewpoint of, of what their reality means, means to them. So one thing that we want to be able to do after we decide and communicate, we want to walk into the golf ball thinking of something that makes you feel light. Thinking of something that makes you feel free. Thinking of something that makes you feel like there's no place I'd rather be than right here, right now. Game on, not game off. You just three putted the last hole, guess what? The stuff you think about, it doesn't even have to be true. It just has to make you feel a certain way. You could be walking into a, a shot after a three putt for 10. Nobody wants that on their card. And you could think to yourself, this is perfect. This couldn't be better. The last time I three putted for 10, I followed up with a birdie. It doesn't even have to be true. It just has to get you in the game versus, versus out of the game. So the biggest difference between athletes at the highest level isn't in how they're springing with their feet or moving their wrist or turning their body or pressuring the ground or controlling the loft of the face. It's how they think, right? And how they either supercharge their ability to be awesome or how they sabotage their ability to be awesome. 
decide, communicate, elevate. So all of these things right here, right, we're trying to increase the likelihood of finding the outcome we're looking for. But guess what? Golf is really challenging, right? Think about it. I mean, think about how ludicrous this game is, right? We've got a little ball about this big, right? And then we put a, a hole in the ground this big, like hundreds and hundreds of yards away. And then we have the stick with like a metal piece on the end, and it kind of like points up towards the sky. And we're going to sling it around our body somewhere between 90 and 100 miles an hour. And if the ball doesn't hit the face on the stick and go near the hole in the ground, like our lives are over. Like, what in the heck do we even get ourselves into playing this ridiculous game, right? It's a really challenging game. When you watch golf on TV, you know who they show you? The people who are winning. The people who are playing their best golf in that moment. They don't show you the people that missed the cut. They don't show you the people that you know, went into the parking lot and threw their clubs in the trunk and slammed the trunk and drove off and got all frustrated. You know, so we're conditioned to believe that, like, oh, this, we should be able to do this stuff. But it's really, really challenging. And we have chosen, we have chosen to have this experience, right? So anytime you're anger or frustrated, you chose this, right? So maybe we can look at this from a different perspective where we can accept the challenge and not be so negatively uh, affected by it. Does that make sense? OK. Um, I saw a thing the other day, it was a great video. And the guy said, you know, out of all the uh, anger, frustration, and disappointment you experience in your life, there is but one common denominator, and that is you. Right? Basically, he's saying that you're choosing to view things in a problematic way, and that's why you've got a bunch of problems. Right? So we need to shift the lens and look at life from a more inspired perspective, right? So decide, communicate, elevate. The ball leaves the face. Oh, now it went over there. Well, what are we going to do when we don't get what we want? This is what we need to do. We need to be cool. We got to be cool. You know, so we talked about Shakespeare yesterday when I bumped into you guys, right? So Shakespeare, you know, if you haven't had to study Shakespeare, it's coming. So just, just know that. Right. right. You're not going to be able to wiggle your way out of it. Um, I went to see uh, a Shakespearean play you know, in Stratford-upon-Avon with my partner, Kate, years and years ago, um, because she was a, an English major, and her dad you know, built theater sets, and you know, Shakespeare was a big part of their lives. And I sat in the front row. And I just squinted the whole time. I was trying to like squint my way into understanding what they were talking about. I had no idea what was going on. Um, so I don't know a whole lot of Shakespeare. Um, but I do know some Shakespeare, and this is what he said. He said, nothing is either good nor bad until thinking makes it so. Which basically means that things or outcomes, they just are. Nothing is good or bad. They just are. Right? This is a pen. You know, this is AstroTurf. That's a television set. You know, beyond that door is outside. It just is, right? When we start labeling things as good or bad, that's a human choice. That is a decision, right? So how we choose to interpret our reality determines if we're happy or not, you know? So with my athletes relative to golf, we don't have good or bad shots anymore. It's either an online shot or an offline shot. Where'd it go? Oh, it went next to the hole, online. Great. Yeah, fantastic. We can celebrate that because if you celebrate it, you're just raising your mood, so no big deal. If the ball goes over there, it's not bad. It's just over there. <laughs> right? So let's walk over there and let's decide, communicate, elevate. Now it's just over there. Right? Let's walk over there. Decide, communicate, elevate. Now it's just over there. Well, now it's closer to the hole. Well, that's kind of exciting. Right? But if we're always seeing outcomes as good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, then our emotional state's going up, down, up, down, up, down, right? You're going to be a miserable golfer, and you're going to be a miserable human being as well because you are choosing to interpret reality in a non-inspiring way. So mental toughness coaching is all about using your mind only in ways that serve your ability to be awesome. Now, mental toughness training is the same as physical training, right? So as you guys get a little bit older, right, 
you guys are old enough to do this, but like if you guys are a little bit older, you might go to the gym and you might exercise and work out. And we understand, we totally get that when you go to the gym, you know, you cannot rip off a set of bicep curls, look in the mirror and go, ho, 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 I'm jacked. Time to buy a bigger shirt for these guns to fit into. We get that, right? We know that repetition over time allows us to change our bodies. Same thing with the mind, but because we can't physically see the change, sometimes it's hard for us to stick with it, right? So we have to come up with practices. We have to use tools that help us build these new ways of, of viewing, viewing the world. So as you start to go through this process, right, if you hit a shot and you have a negative reaction, like, don't be hard on yourself, right? Be kind to yourself. Just start getting better at catching yourself being negative. Have a moment of ownership where you go, yeah, I get it. This isn't helping me. And then replace that negative thought with a thought that's based in some kind of positivity or gratitude. So we use a mental toughness tool called C-O-R, which is catch, own, and replace. And one exercise that I think would be great for, for all of you, maybe even as a family, not just relative to golf, is to start your day right at that little center island in your kitchen. Everyone's got one of those, right? And what I want you to do is get like a bunch of paper clips. You probably got paper clips somewhere in a drawer that you just don't even use anymore because everything's just done by computers, right? And what I want you to do is like have everyone in the family grab like a huge handful of paper clips and just shove them in your front pocket. And you go, all right, team, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go out into the world today trying to be more aware of how we're thinking about the way things are going, specifically trying to catch moments of frustration or negativity. So if you find yourself being negative about, about anything, right, being stuck in traffic, you know, dealing with someone at work, dealing with one of your teachers, topping your golf ball on the ground, you know, catch yourself, well, there it is. Reach in your front pocket, pull out a paper clip. Right? So that's the catch part. You're going to hold that paper clip, right, right against your heart, and you're going to go, ownership, <sighs> I get it. The way I'm thinking in this moment is not helping me have the day or live the life that I want. You replace that thought with something that's based in positivity or gratitude. You slide the paper clip in your back pocket and you go about your day. At the end of the day, everybody comes home, back to the island, you reach in your back pocket and you go, this is what I got. And that's how many times during the day your thinking in that moment has diminished your joy for life and gotten in the way of you being the person that you want to be. So do you think that it's possible to never have a negative thought again? Like ever? No, neither do I, right? Do you think it's possible to take like a mountain of negativity and just like over time, just kind of get it knocked down to it's like not getting in your way so much? That's what mental toughness coaching and training is all about, right? So none of this stuff is necessary. But when you start to see the world in a more inspired way, you start to feel happier, more light, more free, and you start to find a little joy within the struggle of trying to learn how to do something like, like play golf, right? So when I'm practicing, you know, I don't care what I'm getting. Like, I know I'm working on something. I'm working towards something. If I hit way behind the ball, if I shank a ball, if I top a ball, I mean, these things happen to the world's best players when they're changing their swings. Because they understand that you know, one movement is dependent upon another movement. So if I kind of upset the apple cart over here, and I don't adjust something over here, I'm going to get some weird stuff. Right? So they're not like, you know, emotionally attached to the outcome when they're trying to learn. You know, they'll hit a shot, boom, that was a deep divot. OK. What would I have to do differently on the next one to get that divot to shallow out a little bit? OK, well, based on my coaching, we're working on this. OK. Boom, that's another big deep divot. Well, maybe I'm just not being different enough. That's my move, and that's what I'm looking for. Good. OK, let's try and do that again. I mean, they're not a bunch of crazy people out there. They're just trying to solve a puzzle with good information. And they understand that their attitude right, determines their, their altitude. And once you understand that, you'll stop getting in your own way. Right? Decide, communicate, elevate, and be cool. When you guys play golf today, you know, try and go through these steps as best you can. But if you can try and work on three and four, that would be awesome. Right? That's really, really going to help you. Again, it's not, it's not easy. If you are not being cool, right? you, know, you don't yell at him, you don't yell at him, you guys don't go, ah. just be like, 
hey, here's a moment. Here's a moment where we can learn something, right? Let's catch it, and let's turn it around, right? And I think if you can do that, you're just going to find way more joy coming out here because it's such a challenging game. And, uh, you know, it should be fun. You know, when we go to the golf course, we tell people we're going to play golf, P-L-A-Y. If you look up play in the dictionary, it literally says to have a good time. And um, if you can't go to the golf course showing up ready to play, you should find something else to do that is a lot easier on your, on your head and a lot easier on your heart. But if you can approach everything with a little bit of patience, will, and discipline, shift the lens in your favor, then mental toughness stuff becomes so much fun because you start to feel like you got like a little superpower. You don't have problems anymore. You don't have stress anymore, right? And that's like a, a beautiful way to go through life and we can learn that stuff through golf. Right? So my program in Oregon is called Make the Turn. And um, a lot of people think about the turn like, oh, front nine to the back nine. But when I was coming up with this concept, it was really all about you know, using the game in a beautiful way to help us not only play well, but, but, but live well. Because we have all these lessons you know, that are inherent within, within the game. So uh, another definition of turn is to shift purpose or direction. Right? So if our direction right now is not inspiring, well, we can shift it and change it by changing our attitudes around it. Um, in the world of magic, the turn is when something presented as ordinary transitions into something extraordinary. Right? So I feel like I'm sort of teaching awakening through golf. I want to help golfers not only shoot lower scores, but I want to help them use the game to help them have their lives be the way they want them to be. And that's why my coaching has such an emotional element to the overall picture, because in order to get that result with all of the information we're giving you, and it's all the right information, it's all the right technical information, but if we don't have the right emotional mindset and heart set, you're gonna have a hard time getting those results. You're gonna have a hard time enjoying the game with the level of joy that you all, you all deserve.